um, I just want to preface this by I am like the lighthearted uh, break. Everything has been so unbelievable and powerful. Um, this is not that. <laughs> um, how I got here. So um, uh, Carly is a friend and investor. And about a month ago, um, she said, you should meet Imran. And I didn't get through 15 minutes of explaining what we do. And he's like, you got to come to Voices. And so I'm, I'm here. Um, to be fair, though, um, uh, we did change like my entire presentation because we didn't want this to be too uh, commercial. But it's unbelievable to sit here for the past um, you know, day and see the unbelievable speakers and topics and, and all of that. And so what we did was we said, I, I literally, this is true, I changed my whole deck and I just put in random pictures from my phone. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, <laughs> because the reason that we're here is, you know, we sell sneakers and streetwear, but the question is, right, can we have... A, a market for luxury goods the same way we do for, for sneakers and streetwear, right? And so, you know, these are the product categories that, that we have. And, you know, for bags and watches, they're babies. We do like $40 million a year in, in that. The rest of the business is like a billion. So we're just getting started. But there's some basic economic principles and business logic and the reaction from our luxury customers today that says we should be able to do what we've done for sneakers and streetwear for luxury, okay? And that is what we call a stock market of things. And this is the first random picture. That's me photobombing Michael B. Jordan at our basketball game. Right? Um, stock market of things. This is about not sneakers. This is about um, the idea that we are a consumer goods marketplace. right? And today, most people know us as the largest marketplace in the world for sneakers and streetwear. Right? But saying that StockX is just about sneakers is saying like Uber is just about rides. It's true, but there's a lot of people that sell rides, and there's a lot of people that sell sneakers. The real value, the big idea, is in changing the way that people buy and sell rides or sneakers or all consumer goods, including luxury. Right? And so for us, having that opportunity to, to, to literally create a new product category is, is what we're trying to do. So... When we talk about being a consumer goods marketplace, think eBay, right? It is an evolution of eBay. All we do is connect buyers and sellers to buy or sell a consumer good. But the way that we do that is the exact same way that the world's stock markets connect buyers and sellers. And there's a lot of nuance to how that works, but at its core, it's around the concept of true market price. This is me photobombing a different celebrity at a different basketball game. And I think now we're starting to see a pattern. There's no more photobombing after this, I, I promise, right? But true market pricing is about confidence. So think about it. You buy a share of Nike stock on the New York Stock Exchange. You feel confident that the price you paid for that is real because it's a function of tens of thousands of people all at the same place at the same time negotiating to surface that true market price. Compare that to eBay or, or Poshmark, where the price of any single item is whatever that one seller is trying to get for it or whatever one buyer is willing to pay. If you search for the shoes that I'm wearing on eBay, you'll get 1,000, 2,000 listings. And then you have to decide, do I buy from this guy or that guy? Why is that one 800 and that one 600? How many reviews does this person have? Why is there a cat in the picture? Like, all that stuff is irrelevant. If you buy a share of Nike stock on the New York Stock Exchange, there aren't thousands of people saying, buy my Nike stock, buy. No, there's one ticker symbol for Nike. And every bid and every ask happens all at that same place. And so there's one market price. And that's what we're trying to do for consumer goods, right? To surface that one true market price. There's a lot of reasons why we think a stock market is a better form of commerce for certain products. But perhaps the most important is a concept that we call sell now, right? So to be clear, this isn't a photo bomb. This is when I met Amy Schumer at a basketball game, although her face maybe indicates otherwise. <laughs> sell now, this idea that um, in, in the history of commerce, we're all familiar with buy. The buyer has the choice, right? The seller says, I'm selling this widget for $100. Do you want to buy it? And the buyer can say yes or no. But in only the stock market can the seller also choose to transact immediately across a market price, right? The seller also has the choice. If, the, if you're selling a share of Nike stock, right, you don't go list it for sale and hope a buyer comes and buys it. No, you go to the market. Nike's trading at 70 bucks a share, and you can sell it immediately, right? By using the concept of true market price and a live bid-ask market the exact same way that the world's stock markets work, 
right? We've made it as easy to sell a pair of Nikes as it is to sell a share of Nikes. So what's next? Well, to start, no more celebrities. That's my daughter sitting in my sneaker closet. And I like having Fiona up to talk about the future, right? So what happens next? Where, how do we grow, right? So we're about two and a half years old, about a billion dollar um, total marketplace sales. But it is like day zero around here because it's about the model, right? It's about this idea that you're, you're creating literally a new form of commerce. For lack of a less cliche way of saying it, like this is truly revolutionary in that it didn't exist before. The only place that exists is in the actual stock market. And that's the best part, right? We didn't make this up. The stock market has been the most efficient form of commerce for hundreds of years. And all we did was point it at these commodities, stocks and bonds and oil and gold, to sneakers and streetwear and watches and handbags. And so the product categories that we're in today, right, the reason we're in bags and watches is because it's about the, the brands that are here, right? This is supply and demand. This is Econ 101 at its most basic. And the leading brands in all these categories, they all have the same very extraordinary supply and demand curves, where they create a situation where there is more demand for the product than there is supply. It leads to sellouts at retail, it leads to extraordinary prices, it leads to secondary markets. Because those brands don't participate in those secondary markets, it leads to authenticity issues and fragmentation. Right? Because they're not there, you also have access, uh, lack of access to uh, transparent pricing. Uh, I mean, it is identical down the board. So that's why these are the product categories that we're in, right? It's how it works for those particular scenarios. So this model doesn't work for every consumer good, it doesn't work for every product, but it works for a lot, right, that, that fall into this category. And so that's one, where any other um, consumer goods marketplace, you add other product categories. But the really interesting part becomes when we can start to work with brands to literally retail IPO products. This is my daughter two years later in the same room holding the picture that I showed earlier. And I think the point of this is just that kids grow fast. Um, literally IPOing consumer goods in the marketplace, right? MSRP is antiquated. Retail price is antiquated. These products have supply and demand curves that dictate the value is something else. And we've done some of these. So last year, Nike released LeBron James' first retro sneaker directly on a StockX before Nike.com, before Foot Locker. I mean, this was a big deal. This was on the homepage of the New York Times because it was a big deal about Nike going direct to the secondary market. I mean, could you imagine if, if Louis Vuitton released a, a product that was exclusive and only on eBay, right? But what we did was, this was a true IPO. It was a Dutch auction, they cleared at the lowest price. I mean, the way an IPO works for, for stock. But what happened afterwards was the whole thing, right? After the IPO cleared, there were several people that wanted to resell these products. And we let them resell it without ever taking possession. So we literally created day trading in consumer goods, right? This is like oil futures, like gold, I mean, true commodities trading. And yeah, this was the best picture I could find for commodities trading, right? But like, that's the idea, right? Which is that anything you think can happen within the stock market, shorts and futures and indices and fractional shares, like for consumer goods, like yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, 100%. Because the idea here, and it's not, it's not sexy to say, um, but that consumer goods are commodities, right? Consumer goods are assets. And that's not a positive or a negative word, it's an economic word, right? They have very distinct supply and demand curves. And for the whole history of the world, we understand supply, right? We know exactly what we produce, what a brand produces. But demand, demand's unknown. Right? There may not be anything that resembles a true demand curve. Demand is a projection, it is a, an estimate off of last year. We don't know demand, except in the stock market, right? Except where you have a live bid ass market. The stock market, and what we're trying to create at StockX, may be the purest form of consumer demand that exists anywhere, right? So the question is, like, what if we could tell you the exact consumer demand, the exact number of people who wanted to buy something? for every single piece and every single collection for all next year, right? That's what we're talking about. This is just, all this is is a variable pricing model that moves real time with the market to show true consumer demand, right? And so that was the hypothesis. 
And so it works pretty well so far. And, and now we get to figure out, does it work for luxury? Does it work for fashion? What are the other places that it works? So I'm just thankful that you guys let me come here and talk about it you know, in the middle of this. And, and also, I just want to say, I speak all over the world. And this stage and environment is just fantastic. It's awesome to have everyone like this close. It's, yeah, it's, it's really just amazing. So thank you all so much for having me. Thank you.